Hi everybody, welcome to Armour 3 and welcome to the first of a series of videos I'm going to record about how to create DayZ Ravage mission scenarios using the Armour 3 Eden Editor. So if you didn't know already, Armour 3 has the amazing Eden Editor which basically enables you to create your own single player as we're going to create here or multiplayer scenarios not just for DayZ but for you know Armour gameplay as well. It's very very easy, it's very very rewarding, very very fun. So without further ado, the um, mods that you'll want to have uh, installed on Armour 3 and to load up before you fire up Armour are the Ravage mod um, and that comes along, you need to install CBA A3 mod with that as well. You'll want the Cherneris Redux mod as well which also requires Cup Terrain's core and although we, we're not really going to concentrate on Zombies and Demons it, it's nice to um, have zombies and demons available because it gives you a different flavour of Daisy than, um, than than Ravage do. So you want to subscribe to them and then you want to fire up um, uh, the uh, launcher with those mods and go into Armour 3. And what we want to do is we want to go into the editor and you'll see you'll have Cherneris Redux. Now you can create Ravage missions on any of the maps that are available. Now if you um, go to some of the some of the expanded map packs. There's loads and loads of different maps. Obviously, if we're doing it on Cherneris, um, it's familiar to Daisy players. Um, you'll see Livonia here as well. Now, Livonia, you must have the um, the contact DLC to have access to that map, so it's probably not the best one to do it on. I would also say though that that the beauty of using the maps like the Stratus map is that they're very very small, and armor runs much much better on these smaller maps. Cherneris is a really big map. There's loads of assets on it, and it can make the game chug a bit. But if you're after that real kind of Daisy feel um, beyond sort of zombies, then you know you're probably going to want to have a go with Cherneris. So let's go into Cherneris, and it's going to it's going to load up the map for us. If you're new to the Eden editor, it, you're going to learn an awful lot over these videos and a lot of it seems pretty complicated to start off with but trust me once you get into the swing of things and you kind of start to understand how things work then you're going to be amazing you're going to have so much fun right, let's just uh, lock this cursor so what have we got here let's go full screen as well so in the middle of the screen we have got the 3d view of Cherus. Um, on the left hand side we've got various things we go we, we will create and on the right hand side we've got various assets and things we can use. Don't worry too much about it at the moment. Just just think about this middle section here. If we press M we can then go to the map and if we scroll all the way out with our mouse wheel you kind of get the idea. Oh right, okay, so so this is Cherneris. It is. Now it's a slightly different Cherneris to Daisy Cherneris, Daisy standalone Cherneris. Um, but there's, there's enough stuff that's um, familiar um, for it to, to be fun. Now, what you can do is you can scroll around the map, and if you right click with the, uh, if you, sorry, zoom in a bit. If you uh, right click with the mouse, you'll see go here. If you click that, that will then move this object here. This is the camera. And if we press shift while we're, we're, we're uh, clicking down on the camera we can move it around and what happens is if we then press M to go back to the map that will then have moved our view to this bit so you know you may well want to be using WASD um, and then Q and uh, Z just to move around and just have a look because <laughs> you know, it is very very fun but what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on the kind of our initial settings to start off with um, so one of the things you probably want to go for first if you go to attributes up here and then we've got general. You can put the title of what your mission is going to be. So I don't. So let's put SSG um, Daisy Survival Survival Sur Survival Mission. There we go. Don't have to worry about a picture, text. Um, you could fill this in later. Um, I would always recommend that as you're going through and, and loading things into the Eden editor and, and as we're using it, try and always use the base game settings all right, rather than DLC settings. That way everybody who's got base armor can use it. So we can do stuff like that. Um, attributes environment. 
So we can change the date. More importantly, you can change the time. So you can have a daytime um, mission, or you could you know slide this up and you could have it at the night time, whenever's best for you. You could have different weather, overcast, that sort of stuff. Um, performance. So this is kind of activation distance settings. I would just leave this everything as it is. Um, now. What we want to do now is basically set up the ravage settings for our map and the way it kind of works in 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 the Eden editor in armor 3 is that we have things called assets here or objects sorry like soldiers and tanks we can put onto the the, the map um, compositions which are groups of, of uh, soldiers and tanks and stuff and then within the the uh, the objects and the compositions you have the different forces so you've got blue four which is NATO You've got Op4, or the baddies, which is CSAT. You've got independent people, which I think is people like the um, different uh, factions that when you're playing armor. And then you've got civilian stuff. And then you've got props. So you've got that within objects and compositions. We've got triggers, which we use to make things happen. We've got waypoints, which we make up, um, units to wander around the map. And we've got systems. And systems is where the real fun begins. So if we click on systems, and then we scroll all the way down. We're looking for Ravage here. See on the right hand side? So we open this up. Now, these these are called modules. And these are the settings that are, we're going to use in our game. But rather strangely, it took me a while to get used to this as well, is what you do is to, to activate these settings in the game, you actually just drag them over onto the map. It doesn't matter where you put them, but you drag them over onto the map. So that has now activated the um, Ravage um, ambient AI module. Now while we're here, because this is the first thing we've put in, we might as well save as, so let's give it a game, um, so, so what do we call it, SSG, uh, I'm using underscore for a space, day Z survival, there we go, let's save that. Now, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through these different modules in order and I'm going to show you kind of what they do. At the end of this, once we place a player onto the map, our mission is good to go. You know, we can actually jump in and, and start playing it there. So if we right click in here, um, if you can keep your mouse still when you right click in, we'll see attributes. Okay, so this is the ambient AI. So if we look at this, this, this bit here, system specific, this is what controls this module. So we've got population factor. One just means it's the default level of population. So you probably don't want to mess with that. Now, the ambient AI in Ravage, these are friendly and hostile forces that will spawn in as you are wandering around surviving and exploring Chernarus, whatever, or whatever map. And then they will maybe do something. So for example, the main hostile forces, up for Raiders faction, so these will be C CSAT Raiders faction, so these guys will be popping into existence as you're wandering around. And depending on this setting here, they might do some different things. So main faction hunters. So what this means is that this, this number goes from 15 to 100. Um, if you had a level of 100 of this uh, at this setting, when these op four raiders spawn in, um, they will start hunting for you straight away. They know you're there and they're going to start hunting for you, start looking for you, trying to engage you and kill you. I kind of think you're better off having that at zero. So that although you're going to bump into raiders, you know, enemy types as they're spawning in around the map, they're not going to come hunting for you straight away, which kind of makes sense. You know, they wouldn't be, would they? If they're, if they're just wandering around Chernobyl trying to survive as well, they're not going to know you're there. If you fire your gun, they're going to know and they're going to come looking for you or stop fighting zombies, they're going to come looking for you. Or if you're in a noisy vehicle, they come looking for you. But they're just going to spawn in. And then we have secondary hostile forces, independent raiders faction, um, and then we have, that's at zero as well, so they're not going to come looking for us. Ambient camps, so at night these guys are going to be sitting in, in camps, and then we have friendly forces. So we're saying that there's going to be friendly forces, blue force survivors faction, so these are friendly AI soldiers that we can actually go up to, and there's a chance, uh, set at 25 at the moment, that um, there'll be a trader. So they'll have some stuff on them that you can swap around. Um, then underneath we've got ambient chatter, so will they talk? Will renegades spawn? So this is single-player civilians who will be hostile to everybody. Um, 
Will there be car patrols? They're quite fun. And then you've got spawn distances. Don't mess with those. So you may well be thinking, whoa, 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 what's all what is this, Rob? So unlike in DayZ, standalone, where we don't have any AI wandering around, this straight away, this module in the Ravage, gives us AI, gives us two factions of enemy AI that are going to pop in um, and wander around, and a friendly faction as well. Now, you may well decide that you don't want any enemy AI or friendly AI just popping in and out of existence around the map as you're wandering around. And I sometimes feel like that, depending on the mission you're doing. I think maybe on Chernerus they really work. You know, they really work well because you would have survivors. But maybe if, say, you're doing a mission on Stratus, which is a lot smaller, would you really expect enemy AI just to suddenly pop up and start fighting you? M maybe not. So you might not want to have this um, module active. But it gives you this dynamism to um, Ravage Daisy that maybe Daisy Standalone doesn't have. Because remember, this is single player we're playing here. So. You know, should do that. So, so we'll leave that like that, and we'll say okay. Now, ambient zombies. Let's put this on the map now as well. Right-click it, go to attributes. This is really cool. So, uh, system specific ambient zombies. So, what what are the zombies going to be like um, as they're wandering around the map? What are you going to come across? So, we can have runners, walkers, or both. I'm a big fan of just having walker zombies. I like I like it. They just they're just wandering around. They just and they're going along. Bolters ratio. These are the ones that I think stay still and start running. So I tend to put that down to zero. Um, population limit. So this is how many um, zombies can spawn in um, per player. Um, Fifty is pretty good. That's quite a lot of that's quite a lot of zombies. And global population is two fifty. Sun factor. Will they? Will, will you get more of them at in in at night time? And how much do they sound? How much damage do they do? Twenty five is pretty good. Can they grab your equipment? So what will happen is when a zombie gets close, sometimes it will grab your backpack and throw it on the ground. Damage multiplier. Audio or audio detection is at zero point two five one. Now, I tend to turn down the visual detection like that. So it's really low. Oh, I like my zombies in in Daisy and uh, Armor Three Daisy to be pretty dumb. You know, they just, they can't see very well. They can't hear very well. So you can wander around, do your thing. However, if you do get into a gunfight or something like that, they will hear you and they will come wandering over to try and kill you. Horde behavior, um, dead rising, so that dead, dead humans will actually turn into zombies and start coming after you. And then you've got your spawn radius. So this is how far away they will spawn from you as you're wandering around the map. Um, dirty uniforms, leave that as no. Um, and that is your ambient zombies. Now, you may want to turn the population limit down because this controls, just as you're doing your normal stuff, wandering around Chernerus, these are the zombies that are going to be spawning into existence and, you know, and you're going to be shooting them or doing whatever you want to do to do with them. I'll say OK to that. Atmosphere next. So let's drag this onto the map to activate it. Let's have a look at the attributes. Color filter. So this changes the look of the, the map. Ambient music, yeah, I'd definitely say have that on. Dynamic weather, yeah, that's a bit of fun. Breath fog, um, I guess Chernerus can be pretty cold, maybe. I, I tend to leave it off. Dy dynamic sand gusts tend to leave it off on Chernerus. If I'm on Stratus, though, I'll have that on. If I was on um, a colder map, maybe um, Livonia, or if I ever got around to doing one on the Malsk, I'd have breath fog, but I'd say no to that. That's that one. Debug mod module. You know, you can put that one on. What the debug module enables you to do is if you go into the map mode when you're playing, you, it shows you where zombies are spawning in. Gear pull. Let's put this one next. So let's look at the attributes as usual. So it's saying, well, of the gear that is in Armour 3, what sort of gear should you get? And the, the, the accepted... Um, thing that lots of people do is they stick with Altis, but I guess you could ch uh, you could put Chernerus too. Um, and I leave everything else as as kind of standard there, um, and it's just telling you what stuff can come in. But we've activated that. So loot system. Let's pull that one on next. Look at the attributes. Um, and basically, we're saying is where should loot spawn? So the default thing is it should spawn in armor three structures. And in ambient furniture, so, so, so ambient furniture is things like um, trash piles, um, 
it, uh, chest of drawers, um, containers, all that sort of stuff. Now, I have seen some people kind of do this as well, and they just turn yes on for everything. I don't think you can really go wrong by turning yes onto everything. Now, down here as well, this is how we can adjust the chances of things spawning. So, for example, if we look at the civilian loot spawn chances, um, within this section here, we've got survival items, weapons, magazines, clothes, and backpacks. So if we wanted more survival items to spawn in, we would change that left hand 15 to 25. If we wanted more weapons to spawn in, we would change that 8 to a 16. If we go down to military, you can see that the 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 weapon section, which is the second from the left, is already at 20. So you could change these. I personally, I would probably leave them as they are. You know, um, because the beauty with Armour 3 Daisy is that you can choose your loadout you want to go in with or the, that your player wants to go with. You can give them quite a lot of stuff. Um, and also, um, the uh, as you can see in a minute, you can actually have it so that you, you don't actually have to eat and drink if you don't want to, um, which, which is pretty cool as well. So let's put that in there. Um, radioactive zone placement. So... Again, I, I don't really use this one because it's not something we really have in vanilla Daisy. But what you can do is you can have radioactive zones around the map that that you know do your damage when you go into them, and you've got to take anti-rad pills. Safe zone. So what you can do with a safe zone is um, you can place a safe zone down, and then you go into the attributes, and you can put a radius around it. So five hundred meters. And what would happen is, within 500 meters of this, where, where I've actually put this module, no zombies would would would, uh, would spawn. And in fact, if we uh, safe zone type retreat, so we probably put delete. So that means if a zombie goes into the safe zone, it it, it will delete itself. So that can be very good for um, if your character spawns in at the at the coast, for example, you could have a safe zone there. Um, so that you got have like a starting safe zone where there's going to be no ambient zombies. Um, safe system. Let's just go into that. So single player saves, yes. Multiplayer persistency. This is a single player campaign, so we're going to say yes. Multiplayer persistence. I'm not. I'm going to leave that as it is because this isn't a multiplayer scenario. Um, let's go to settings now. Look at the attributes. So clean up system, yes. Enable holster function, yes. Dynamic and then animation speed, yes. Time acceleration four. If you wanted time to go at normal rate of time, you could go to to, to one. Or if you wanted it to go so, like every minute um, in the game is the equivalent of two minutes normally, you could put two there. Vehicle caching system. Um, I might say yes to that, so it gets rid of them. Advanced animal behavior, advanced driver, uh, yes. AI looters, gunshot reactions, yes. So we'd have all that on there. Um, survival system. So let's activate this module. There we go. Attributes. So this, the hunger rate and the thirst rate, this is how quickly you be, your character will become, and your AI characters you have with you, become hungry and thirsty. Again, just leave it at one and one. Um, no radioactive zones, radioactive water, no radioactive rain, no. I mean, if you wanted a, a, a more tricky situation, you, you could turn those on. Um, but that kind of works for me. Um, what you got to try and remember is that Armour 3, Daisy, like using something like the Ravage mod, um, its strengths are the military simulation side of Armour 3. Um, you know, shooting and teamwork and vehicles and helicopters, all that sort of stuff. Although it does have a survival element for for um, looting and eating and drinking, it's not its strong point. You know, Daisy standalone, or I guess the Daisy mod back in the day, its real strength, I think, is its survival aspects. And Daisy standalone, normal Daisy, on whether it be on console or PC, is a much better survival game than Armour 3, even with mods, ever can be. Okay? So it's a different flavour of, uh, of Daisy you're playing. It's more of a shootery. You know, fly, you know, drive around in tanks, have fun type of thing. Mission based, where, you, where you're doing missions. Um, survival system, vehicles. So let's have a look at this one. So what this module does is it spawns vehicles onto the map. So you can have normal wrecks and you can have wrecks that were on fire. Um, it says are they damaged? What's the presence low? Um, and we'll have a 10% 
um, chance of burning wrecks. Again, I would leave that as it is. Uh, if you're actually on the smaller maps though, like Stratus, I wouldn't bother having this on there because you start to you end up with wrecks in funny places like the, in the middle of airfields and things. Um, now, zombie blacklist area. This is similar to the safe area zone. So we won't go into that. However, zombie horde placement. This is where we start getting into lots of fun. So let's say, um, let's go down to Kamishovo here. So this is Kamishovo. Let's say specifically within Kamishovo, on top of the unordinary ambient zombies that are spawning down around, we want to put in a zombie horde. So with the zombie horde module, you plonk it down on the map like so and then you go into the attributes and we can say right with this horde how many uh, sorry what type of zombies are going to come out of this horde runners or walkers or both so let's say we have both crawlers ratio so these are the ones that um yeah crawl so how many percentage i don't i'm not a big fan of crawlers so i just have it quite quite low horde size so how many zombies should there be in this horde so 30 is pretty good um, spawn distance of 50 so how far from the model zombies should spawn so what we're saying here is that 30 zombies are going to spawn over um, a spawn distance of 50 meters so they're going to be pretty pretty spread out um, and the spawn trigger radius is 500 meters so that means that the, the zombies will spawn in when we get within 500 meters of them now what this means is that in areas like Kamishovo or any towns or villages or Chernogorsk or Electro, you know, you can have uh, hordes of zombies um, to give you that more that, that that increased density of zombies that you would expect in these areas, just like you would have in in Daisy standalone. You know, because basically, as you're moving around the map um, in in a Ravage uh, Armor Three Daisy, there's going to be just as many zombies here, ambient zombies, as there are here in the middle of in the middle of the the woods and uh, trees. And I guess you would kind of really expect there to be more zombies in the in the in the towns, wouldn't you? So that's what you can use the zombie hordes for. You can also use them to protect um, objectives. So basically, by adding these modules to the map, we have now activated them. So we better save it. So we're almost good to go now. So all we need to do now is is place our player on the map, and we can play. So. We can place our player wherever we want. Um, where should we put him? Well, I'll tell you what. We we put a safe zone down here, didn't we? So why don't we put him on near this space safe zone? And let's move the safe zone to there. So to put a player onto the map, we go up here to objects. Now we want our guy to be a blue four guy, I guess. And then we want to come here, down here probably to NATO. And we want to slide down to men. And then we want to choose which sort of man we want to put on. So let's... This is where it gets lots and lots and lots of fun. Doesn't really matter which one we're going to put on because I'm going to show you how to uh, how to mod how to change him as well. So we choose auto rifleman, and let's put him down there. Let's press M to go to look. Oh, turn up, sorry. Let's put our camera here. So we right click, uh, go here. Let's just slide that. Press shift to turn it round. Let's press M to go back to the map. Let's just drop down. This might look a bit choppy because I'm recording this on my laptop. And there, my friend, is our survivor. So we can shift click him and we can turn him around. So there is our fella. That is us in the game or it would be when we start the game so if we right click where his little blue dot is and go into attributes see where it says ticked for player so so that's cool we can give him a rank we can start him doing something special states we can say actually i don't want him to have any oh, sorry i don't want him to be affected by stamina so that's a good one to take off now enable damage it only makes you um, invincible to bullets, um, not to zombies, funnily enough, because zombies hurt you in a different way. <laughs> so, but you could, I guess you could take damage off if you really wanted to. Um, identity, give him a different name, give him a different voice if you wanted to. 
we can say OK. But where we really have the fun is if we right click here and we go to Edit Loadout. So here we go. This is this is where you're going to spend many many hours. Excuse me. So now we are in the virtual arsenal. So we can right click and drag him around for our soldier. So what you can do now is first off, let's start with the uniform. So let's click on here. Um, and what I like to do sometimes is sort by mod. And I kind of think, again, to make things better for people who may be playing your scenario, if you decide to put it onto Steam, go for clothes that don't have any um, markings here, unless it says Ravage, okay? Um, if we slide down, you'll see what I'm talking about. So you see these, these markings here. This means that this suit here... Um, CBRN suit Woodland NATO is a part of the um, contact DLC. Now, not everybody who has armor has the contact DLC, so you want to avoid that. But see this here, it kind of says Ravage. All of these are part of the, the Ravage mod that you're loading up, so you could have some of these. Now, they're not all um, military based. So if you scroll through, you can see, if, if we let's take his helmet off. And let's go back to the uniform. I know he's got his vest on, but you can choose stuff that is very survivalist in terms of like, um, looks like Daisy stuff. Uh, what have we got? Commoner clothes, red and white. You know, I mean, <laughs> competitor suit. I think that's from um, Armour Carts, maybe. Uh, there's a ghillie suit jacket and shorts very nice journalist clothes you, know, so you can have a very civilian look to your to your guy um, let's say scientist clothes that's quite cool isn't it but let's say our guy is actually a uh, He is a he is a soldier who's washed up on the on the shores of Chera. So we've got a uniform. Let's go to the gun. <laughs> Again, you will have hours and hours and hours of fun of playing with this. A good gun to start off with is something like the MXSW, um, the six point five mill millimeter gun. Um, it's yeah yeah it's got fully auto or it's got single fire um and uh, it's a ni it's a nice gun to play with again with the guns just choose something that doesn't have a marking to the right so it's not part of any dlc now once you've selected the gun uh, normally straight away what you have over here is you have all the sights that are available i would recommend you go with something like the rco which i guess is the something or other combat optic because this gives you a red dot and a magnified sight in one and then, if we look over here, we've got the different attachments on the right-hand side. We've got rail attachments, so I'd recommend the flashlight so you can see in the dark. And then I would always say, put the suppressor on it. And then we've got a nice gun there. Don't put a launcher on your shoulder, because your character will be too heavy. Um, uh, the pistol, the PO 79mm pistol, very nice. Again, I would say, stick a suppressor on it, so that's good. Uniform vest. Um, when you're choosing which vest to use, if you look down in the bottom right hand corner, it will give you an idea of ballistic protection, explosive resistance, load and weight. We're not that bothered in a single player zombie game about ballistic protection, but if you're coming across lots of uh, enemy AI, you might want to, and you can you know you can just choose you know, what you want your guy to kind of have. Excuse me, and then we've got the backpack, and there are literally. Dozens and dozens of different backpack options that all have different um, load weights. We have uh, helmets as well, or caps. Nice bandana. We can choose what shades we want to put on our character. Uh, night vision goggles. Maybe you want black ones, or whether you don't want them or not. What type of binoculars you want, whether you want binoculars or you want a laser designator. Here's my little tip. Laser designator. Choose the laser designator. You want that because you can have fun with that later. What type of map? Um, the Ravage map is pretty cool. Uh, the terminal, it doesn't really matter, GPS I guess. 
uh, you want to have your radio uh, you want to have your compass and you want to have your watch so next so that's kind of what our character is going to look like so what we can do now is start putting stuff in his backpack and on his clothes so if you go to your uniform down here this white bar tells you how full it is of stuff um, and generally um, it will it should default to the weapon you've selected so if you look here on the right hand side we've got magazines that's the magazines for the currently selected weapon we've got magazines and for other weapons grenades explosives and etc other stuff so what we want to do is we want to add some magazines now so I don't know so uh, 100 uh, 30 round mag so let's add a couple of those we're now full now if we go down to our vest we can now add some other stuff now if you look already we've already got five uh, 100 round magazines <laughs> so that's quite a lot for that so let's have a look let's go down to uh, nine millimeter for the pistol so we've got nine mil nine millimeter 16 round mag so maybe let's oh right we're full actually that our uh, vest is full so let's go to our backpack now so nine millimeter we wanted didn't we let's have one another another couple of those now if you click on magazines and scroll down you'll start to get some of the fun stuff as well so we want we want a canteen don't we with water in um, we want some designator batteries these are for the laser device so let's have a couple of those um, we will need a can opener uh, let's have some tactical bacon let's have a couple of those water purification let's have a couple of those let's find the can opener can opener now I just want to check actually I just want to check my vest because it, sometimes it adds a load of stuff on that you don't really want like smoke grenades and things no. how about on the uniform no okay and what we could do is we could save this um, load out as I don't know test one let's save that one and if we say okay now you can see actually within the game there's our fella with his new rig so let's just save that and that my friend we are we are good to go to test it we can simply press click play scenario it takes a while just to load up dum -dum 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 -dum. speed will obviously depend on whether you're running an SSD or a HD on your computer I'm running this on a shadow cloud gaming PC there we go and we are in and there is our fella if we press M we can bring up the map we can have a look around and literally we can now test our mission and, and run around find zombies shoot our gun and uh, enjoy kind of Daisy uh, themed armor three. So let's come out of that. Return to Eden editor. Now you, oh, you can, it says you can save it. Now if you if you were happy with that and you were ready for it, what you could then do is you could export this to single player, and that would then appear in your scenarios on in uh, in in armor 3 uh, single plan when you went to that and you could crack on and you could play it and you could save it and you could you could do stuff now you may see published to steam workshop there as well and you may well be tempted to have a go at that don't <laughs> although that might be very tempting don't do it there's lots of really cool things we're going to add as well and I'll show you how to do that in some some other videos um, but you just just want to have a go at seeing what you can do with the Eden editor and the, the fantastic things we can do um, with 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 Ravage. Right, so there we go. Now the other videos in this series of videos will be in the description below this video, where I'm going to show you some some more fun stuff. But hopefully, this has been a good introduction to um, Armor Three Daisy using the Ravage mod. Um, I've shown you which mods to use. Uh, the, the modules, the settings to get started, how to put your player on the map and how to play with his loadout and there is more fun stuff to come. Right, if you've enjoyed the video hit like, if you want to see more of the same press subscribe and I will of course see you again soon.